If you want to make math simpler for you, your kids, or your students, you're in the right place. Today, we're diving into math manipulatives. I'll show you what they are, how they make math easier to see and understand, and three quick ideas you can try the moment this video ends. Sounds good? Let's get started. Think of math manipulatives as everyday objects that turn numbers into something you can actually touch. Picture this, instead of just telling someone that three plus two equals five, you take three blocks, place them next to or on top of two more blocks, and suddenly that five is not just a symbol anymore. Now it's something you can see and feel. I love the way math educator John Vanderwall puts it. Manipulatives are physical objects you can use to discover mathematical ideas. And that's just it. They're discovery tools, not fancy decorations or cute toys. So why bother using them? Because seeing is believing. When you or your learner can push, stack, trade, or split actual pieces, abstract math stops feeling so mysterious. Need to regroup in subtraction? You can trade 10 unit cubes for one long rod. And then you solve the problem right there in your hand. If you're wondering why one third equals two six, join two fraction tiles together and suddenly you can clearly see why they're equal. Plus, let's be honest, moving things around is a lot more fun than only doing a worksheet. Fun equals attention and engagement, and engagement equals remembering more. It's a win-win. Do I need to buy special kits? No, you don't. Sure, commercially made math manipulatives like base 10 blocks and fraction tiles are awesome, and I love to use them, but a bag of cotton balls, some Lego bricks, or even dried beans can also get the job done. If you can move it, count it, or line it up, it can be a math manipulative. Who should use math manipulatives? And the honest answer is anyone learning or teaching math. Whether you're a teacher introducing a new concept, a parent helping with homework, a tutor filling in gaps, or an adult refreshing your own math skills, manipulatives make it easier to see what's happening. They're not just for little kids either. Older students, teens, even adults can benefit from them too. It's about understanding and not about someone's age or grade. And if you want a free printable with 10 quick and easy manipulative activity ideas, I made one just for you. It includes 10 tools and simple examples for both students in K through two and three through five. You can download it at any time using the link in the description below. Whether you teach kindergarten or fifth grade or somewhere in between, it'll help you get started right away. So when should you pull out math manipulatives? Anytime you or your learner need to make sense of something. So they're helpful when you're first teaching a new idea or when someone's stuck and needs a different way to see it or when you're reviewing and want to rebuild confidence. Think of them as your go-to when math starts feeling confusing or abstract. How do you use math manipulatives? There's no one right way to use math manipulatives. Just let them show the math. Sometimes you guide your learner with a question like, can you build what 12 looks like? How could we show one half a different way? Or even, what do you notice when we trade these pieces? Other times you hand them the materials and say, can you show me what this means? Let me show you a few quick examples. So here I'm going to demonstrate exploring even and odd numbers using two color counters. Let's lay out six counters and place them in pairs. One pair, two, and three pairs. Any leftovers? No, there's nothing left over. This represents an even number, so we know six is even. Now let's try seven. Same three pairs plus 
one lonely piece. That leftover makes the number odd. Super visual, super quick. In this next example, I'll show you subtraction with regrouping using base 10 blocks. So let's use 42 minus 18 as an example. Here I have four tens and two ones to represent the 42, and I'm gonna subtract 18 from the 42. I can see two ones are not enough to take away eight. So we can regroup one of these tens for 10 ones. So we're gonna take the 10 rod and trade it for 10 ones. Two, four, six, eight, 10, make the trade. Now there are 12 ones and there are three tens. Now I can subtract eight ones, two, four, six, eight. That leaves me with four ones. Now let's count the tens. One, two, three tens minus one ten leaves me with two tens. So what's the difference here? 10, 20, one, two, three, four, 24. And here you actually saw the regrouping happen. And in the third example, I'll show you finding equivalent fractions using fraction tiles. So we have one half here, and then we have these two one-fourth pieces. And you see, if you move them over, they fit exactly below the one-half from end to end. And that's why two-fourths is equivalent to one-half. You can try this with three-sixths or four-eighths, and it's the same idea. So remember, seeing is believing and helps build conceptual understanding. Here's a list of 13 common math manipulatives you might see in elementary classrooms, and students can use them at school or at home. Anglex, base 10 blocks, centimeter cubes, color links, Cuisinaire rods, fraction tiles, mini clocks, pattern blocks, place value discs, play money, like coins and bills, snap cubes or connecting cubes, geometric solids, and two color counters. There is so much more to explore with math manipulatives. I showed you a few ways you can start using them right now. Remember, you can download that free guide with even more ideas to try out. And if you want to see more ways manipulatives can make math easier to understand, click into this playlist here.